Good morning, everyone. It is an honor and a great pleasure to open this symposium, joint symposium, between the Umbrella Association for Psychotherapy and the European Association for Psychotherapy on this very important day, February the 24th. 2023. Welcome to our symposium. Welcome to everyone. Everyone is welcome today and more than a thousand people have registered for today's symposium. A thousand and thirty people have registered for the symposium today coming from all over Europe and from Ukraine. It's wonderful, it's astonishing, and we welcome you all most warmly. Simultaneous translation from Ukrainian into English and from English into Ukrainian is available throughout the morning session. If you click on the interpretation button, at the bottom of your screen and select the language which is correct for you. When you're putting messages in the chat, it's great to see so many messages in the chat already. If you're able to put them in English as well as Ukrainian, that would be really lovely to gather us all together, both those speaking Ukrainian and English. If you're able to, this is helpful. We are delighted to hold this, this um, symposium today, the anniversary of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. The war began eight years ago, but today we honour the landmark moment of the anniversary of the full invasion of Ukraine one year ago. And as our first act in this symposium, I invite us all to hold a minute of silence to mark this moment. There will be a lit candle on the screen for us to focus on during the minute of silence. And please may I invite you not to put messages on, this, on the chat just during this minute of silence so that it doesn't distract our looking at the candle flame. We hold a minute of silence in memory of all those who have been killed in the war in Ukraine. A minute of silence for all those who have been injured in their mental or physical health by the war. A minute of silence to remember all the families who have been separated by the war. A minute of silence to remember all refugees driven from their homeland by the war. We hold one minute of silence. And to bring the minute of silence to a close, some words of President Vladimir Zelensky. 
Freedom is not about having unshackled hands. It is about having unshackled minds. I'm speaking to you today as the president of EAP and also as a psychotherapist who is in full support of the World Council for Psychotherapy Statement, which was submitted to the Russian government in February 2022. In November 2022, myself and other senior colleagues from EAP began to meet regularly online with senior colleagues from the um, Ukrainian Umbrella Association for Psychotherapy. EAP offered this to give support to you, our Ukrainian colleagues, during this terrible time of war. We all have a deep compassion for you in this time of war and want to offer everything that we can to give you support. You told us of the history of your organization, of how psychotherapy research has always been a really important part of your work, and how, as the organization has grown, it has been and still is an important principle that research into psychotherapy remains an integral part of the work that UUP does. When we asked, what can we give you support with? You answered, we wish to hold a forum on ethics to mark the anniversary of the full scale invasion of Ukraine on February the 24th. Please, will you be partners with us in this so that this is a joint event? And so our work together began to prepare and plan and hold this symposium today. It has brought us close together as colleagues, and I wish to pay tribute to our Ukrainian colleagues. I have developed a great sense of admiration and respect for you all through our meeting and our work together. You are holding yourselves with immense dignity, courage and honour in this most challenging and terrible time for your country. You are facing the invasion of your country and in the best tradition of psychotherapists, you are seeking to understand the impact this is having on yourselves and your citizens. You are courageous and you ask the questions, what does war do to us? How does war impact on ethics? How does war change our sense of meaning? And what impact does that have on our work? All of this will be part of the speeches that we will hear today. I honour you, our Ukrainian colleagues, for the dignified way in which you hold the importance of the history of the independence of Ukraine. You are fighting to maintain your historic independence, which goes back to Kyiv Rus, when Ukraine was and there was no Russia. I honour you for the visionary way that you look to the future of Ukraine, to the time of peace which will come, to prepare for the time of peace and think about it now. In the UK, during the Second World War, there was a similarly visionary group of people. They worked together to think about the future of the UK after the war was over. They worked together over a long period of time and they produced something called the Beveridge Report in 1942, before the end of the war. It set out the blueprint for social policy in post-war Britain. 
It had a vision of the UK, of a, for the UK, of a different and fairer society with financial support for those in need, with a national health service offering free health care for everyone. The Beveridge Report was used as the basis to establish the UK in the post-war era. I am full of admiration for you, our Ukrainian colleagues, that your thinking is parallel to this. You want to work towards a vision of your country and be involved in shaping it. You're looking with hope to the future and the identity of your country in the future. You have plenty of positive and good energy and you are serious, committed and organised in your work. This symposium today is part of that and the ethics series that we'll develop after this is part of that. It gives us the space to think about and talk through foundational ideas. It gives the possibility of holding and discussing issues which are sometimes difficult to even think about, never mind talk about. The wars in the 21st century are hybrid wars being fought on so many different fronts, military, economic, political, technological, informational and cultural. The war in Ukraine is a hybrid war in this sense, being fought on all these fronts. The cultural aspect of war is really important, but it's often ignored and its significance overlooked. As American forces discovered in Iraq and Afghanistan, they did not understand the culture of the people of the countries that they invaded, and so they lost on this front. And then they discovered that the military and economic dominance swiftly disappeared. It eroded away in consequence of them ignoring the culture of the countries that they were invading. The Ukrainian war is at heart a war over identity, over language, over liberty. The future Ukraine hopes for is of Ukrainian identity and Ukrainian language set within European culture and European identity, as it was historically. The response of your country to Putin's war has reinvigorated the fight for liberty and you have drawn in the West in defence of liberty. This is a fight for all of us to win the defence of liberty and the values of liberty. This is a war which must be won for the sake of humanity. And you, our Ukrainian colleagues, are leading the way in this. In the war over meaning, Russia lost it on the first day. Their contention that Ukrainian identity doesn't exist has been proven wrong. It has been a massive catastrophic act of misunderstanding. The Russian rulers convinced themselves that Ukrainian identity wasn't real. They ignored the truth of your history. Cultures flourish in times of peace, but they are defined and define themselves in times of war and resistance. We can see now that the war is helping you to gain an even deeper sense of your own identity. It has brought you as a people together in this. You are defining your culture in this time of war and resistance. 
culture and ethics are at the basis and heart of collective existence and they are fundamental to systems of government and poli politics. This is why our symposium is important today. We are going to the heart of the matter, to ethics and culture. You wish to listen to your European colleagues in this vital matter, and we are here to engage with you today. Carl Jung said, as psychotherapists, it is our first task to understand the psychic situation of our time and to see clearly the problems and challenges with which it faces us. I'll just repeat that. This is CJ Jung. As psychotherapists, it is our first task to understand the psychic situation of our time and to see clearly the problems and challenges with which it faces us. This is our approach today. Let us work together in this spirit. Let us listen to each other. Let us speak from the wisdom of our own experience and knowledge and understanding as psychotherapists. We might think as a profession of psychotherapists that we are small and have no voice to speak above the terrible tumult, tumult of political strife and war. But there is a Chinese saying, when the enlightened man thinks rightly, it can be heard a thousand miles away. When the enlightened man thinks rightly, it can be heard a thousand miles away. So let us use our voice with confidence, with dignity, with insight. Let us all make our contribution. And now just a couple of practical points for the day. We just encouraging you to conduct yourself in a very careful, ethical manner throughout today. We are in sensitive areas in our symposium today. And so we welcome everyone to conduct themselves in a very careful and ethical manner. And in this way, we will be modeling and giving parallel process to our topic of ethics, which is the symposium topic. If you have questions, please put them into the chat and this can become a, a good discussion <laughs> position on, on the chat um, and we will pick up questions and comments during the round table and the speakers will pick them up if they have time. Throughout the day, there is a discussion room of journalists. We warmly welcome everyone from the media who is here today and will join us at different points during the day. You will be able to discuss with each other in your media room throughout the day. And at the time of the discussion groups, the speakers will join you in order to be able to answer any questions that you might have. And now it is a great pleasure for me to invite Professor Alexander Filtz, the president of the um, Ukrainian Umbrella Association of Psychotherapy, to welcome you all. Hello, everybody. I'm very grateful for the invitation. Can you hear me? Okay. So I have prepared for you such a speech uh, 
in uh, Ukrainian. It has been translated into English, but I will ask interpreter to interpret it in her own way. And I would also uh, ask uh, Mr. Martinez to uh, change slides if it's possible. I would like to express my gratitude to Ms. President Patricia Hunt for this extremely um, emotional but a very comprehensive welcoming world. I will be continuing uh, it in a more theoretical way, but I will take uh, into account our practical needs as well. So, dear participants of our today's important forum, uh, dear European and Ukrainian colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I will be saying next slide when it's needed. So, the first, first of all, let me thank to all of you for your willingness to support the joint initiative, to talk and to contemplate about the fundamental challenges of the terrible military disaster unleashed by Russia against us, Ukrainians, and with us against all civilized humanity. Next slide, please. I also would like to thank to the UUAP initiative group headed in this situation by Professor Anastasia Skleruk, as well as the EAP organizational group headed by Mrs. President Patricia Hunt for the excellent and coordinated work that made our current forum possible. Next slide, please. I would start from the quotation, Bible quotation by Isaiah. See, look, I am laying a foundation well founded. Whoever built on it will not be harmed. For I turn goodness into a measure of being and justice into a guide. The next one, please. Probably, lots of us might have a question. Why do we all, and we, psychotherapists in particular, have to address to such difficult and seemingly extra therapeutic intellectualizations, such as problem of morality and ethics, and are they relevant to our practice? Next one, please. Uh, to try to answer such questions, it is worth turning to the brief consideration. Without going into too much detail, morality and ethics are considered most often as identical to each other. However, a more careful examination of them still gives an opportunity to develop an important difference between them, to see this difference. The moral. The next slide, please. The morality is a set of maxims and rules for determining what is good, what is bad, and what is fair. Morality is the sphere of heteronomous, that is external ethics. We will be talking about this in a little bit more detailed way a little bit later. Ethics, whereas, is a system of values by which the idea of charitable coexistence regulates itself. Through ethics is always homonymous. So it is a law unto itself. The next one, please. <laughs> Moral maxims do not provide for internal freedom because they are determined by external circumstances. Whereas ethics, being a law unto itself, always presupposes one's own freedom of choice and one's own responsibility, even in spite of external circumstances, if they are against universal ethical example. And here, I would be giving examples which are not written anymore. We feel it really great in Ukraine today because we say that Ukrainians having their moral position, choosing their moral position or even wider ethical position, they actually are ruled by moral maxims that depend on circumstances. They say we cannot 
uh, do anything in any other way. And this is our moral position because we can be punished for, for example, our resistance or if we do not agree with the war. And it is defined by those circumstances they are living in. Whereas when we are talking about ethical uh, position, as law position, it presupposes free choice of the position which can be embodied into some moral deeds. So we say every Russian can choose, freely choose, whether he wants to, he or she wants to have resistance uh, from this absolute obvious evil or to cooperate with this evil. So moral position depends on those circumstances people uh, are staying in. And ethical position, that the position of law that tells us choose what coincides with your basic principles of understanding of good and evil. The next one, please. In other words, in the choice of moral maxims, that is, basic rules, we are guided by the circumstances, as we have just mentioned, and therefore the moral choice is subject to discussion and agreement. Moral maxims oriented to the circumstances always hide some benefit, often still unconscious and not understandable for us. I also have an example here for myself. Once again, I am going to have very known, widely known examples. This example can be the position of Hungarian president, uh, current president Viktor Orban, who uh, explaining position of Hungary as such that has its own moral rules, moral basics that are directed to uh, minimizing circum circumstances of war and some economical troubles in Europe. He, of course, as we understand it very well, sees some kind of uh, uh, benefit in it. Ethical position is a free choice. Next slide, please. An ethical position, on the other hand, is a free choice of an ethical principle. Ethical position is a foundation of Isaiah, in which goodness is a measure of being and justice is a guide. An ethical position is a guide and measure for free choice. I choose what I feel to be fair and good inside of my system of values. And it is coordinated with universal principles of good and justice, not the other way around. Uh, it's not for Navalny, actually, we can say, yes, for Navalny, he knew that he could have been uh, arrested in Russia, he still came to continue his uh, struggle, his fight, so he actually uh, neglected circumstances and made a choice based on his nature ethical values. Next slide, please. The next, please. The next one, please. We, Ukrainians, have chosen an ethical position for which the idea of good coincides with good as such and with evil as evil. The position is uncompromising and perhaps too categorical, but it guarantees us freedom and inner dignity independent of circumstances. We could not do otherwise and we cannot do otherwise in the future. Here I also have the examples of our initial uh, relations with European society when we insisted that we cannot do any other way, we have to go till the end. But at the beginning we were suggested different kind of compromises and so on and so forth, and now we see that everything has changed and what we call collective best is our reliable and really trustful alley and uh, supports us in everything. Next slide, please. Therefore, for us, discussions in the choice of a moral position 
depending on the circumstances and agreed upon in negotiations, can become tantamount to death. We are simply forced to overcome the circumstances and implement our idea of good and justice. Otherwise, we will be deprived of existence. Uh, here I also have the example, but it's understandable. It's it, insisting on the fact that we have to hold our position. It's uh, also the evolution of relation to Ukraine in support from, Ukra from European uh, community and the USA at the beginning of the war and organization of Rheinstein Union, which is now really consolidated and uh, voices practically the same ethical position concerning good as we Ukrainians, thanks to very rigid position of our president. Thank you. Next slide, please. That's why. Next slide, please. Maybe then, per, perhaps because of that, a significant part of the EAP board was guided by moral maxims, according to which the moral position of passive Russians on war depended on the circumstances. And for us, it was an obvious betrayal of universal ethical principles. Maybe that's why there was a misunderstanding between the UUP and the EAP. And we understand really well that the situation at the beginning of the previous year, when we had a 30 years anniversary of, from existence of a European, from the European Association, our request to have very, very rigid, very clear position concerning Russian, dele Russian delegation at that time brought and led to some kind of conflict, which at that time we couldn't really understand. And by this thesis, by this statement, I would like to say that maybe this conflict was brought by different understanding of attitude to Russian to the position of Russians. On the one side, they were moral arguments that our colleagues from the EAP uh, sent to, and very rigid ethical position that we Ukrainian psychotherapists had. Next one, please. Next slide, please. In this difference, the difference between ethical and moral position hides one of the reasons for the profound misunderstanding of our experiences on the part of all who have chosen a neutral or even intolerant moral position towards Russians who do not oppose Putin's aggression. And here I have another example that uh, can be just a simple formula. Let's be uh, tolerant to Russians because they are in a very difficult situation of uh, persecution and it is actually the difference between moral and ethical choice that I always want to talk about. Next one, please. Maybe this conflict situation which arose a year ago between UUAP and EAP will help us and all our colleagues in Europe to better understand each other and, more importantly, our own ethical position in today's changing world. That basically is the motto of our today's forum. Next slide, please. Next slide. It is also possible, and I will talk about this in my next presentation, my next speech, that psychotherapist awareness of the ethical position in relations with patients or clients can serve as an important tool for a deeper understanding of the complex moral position our vis-a-vis -vis are staying in. But this statement, I will I will dwell in more in more details on this uh, statement in my further discussion. Now I just would like to add, without any slides, that 
really we have all sorts uh, gone through the evolution of relations with our European colleagues from seemingly very acute misunderstanding and maybe even we can say acute confrontation in some parts of our relations but we ourselves and our colleagues in Europe and especially this uh, little small organization committee that uh, has been cooperating with us lately for us to be able to gather today here on this forum this cooperation and this this relations and their evolution really has really shown that this ethical position helps not only understanding but also the fact that it is extremely important to have a consolidation around values and senses that we still have to work on in the nearest future and our role of psychotherapists in this will be great because we understand very well that the war brings so much trouble not only material but also psychological um, sufferings that we psychotherapists will have to work very hard and to work a lot to mitigate minimize uh, at least somehow consequences of this war and to sum up i would like to express my gratitude once again to everybody who organized our today's forum very symbolic for us and symbolic for the whole world because this day one year ago started something that we could never expect to happen and it brought us to absolute finalizing of the 20th century we in one year very drastically very abruptly and very unpredictably moved to the new world we and we have to somehow deal with it to build relations with it now i would like to express my gratitude once again for participation in our today's forum and i wish uh, everybody frank discussion in uh frank participation in our discussion that we as ukrainians perceive as unbreakable solidarity in resisting civilization evil thank you for attention and i'm giving the floor to our president of the European Association of Psychotherapists, Mrs. Patricia Hunt. Thank you very much for your opening address, Alexander. I'm moved by your words, and I agree with you that the way in which we have worked through uh, sensitivity and conflict and come through to work as psychotherapists, to understand each other, and to discover the ways to work together. These are really important. Um, these are really, it's really important work that we are doing together that has made today possible and also shows the role that psychotherapists can play in situations of conflict, bringing mitigation, bringing understanding bringing reconciliation so i thank you for your words alexander thank you and i thank you for setting the basis of everything you've said about ethics i think our two opening addresses were very complimentary and now i'm very pleased to invite